Okay, so we're here today to install the fire alarm system. It's going to be uh, an advanced control panel, hardwired, but with an Apollo expander radio module. So technically it's a hybrid system, although it will be predominantly radio equipment on there. <laughs> This is the project planning. It's got all the uh, diagram of all the devices where they're going. Call point, main fire panel, that's the entrance that we're working at the moment now. Um, all the list of the devices. And then once all that's fitted, when everything's all programmed, I've got a zone chart here. It's gonna go somewhere around the panel. So if there was to be a fire, fire brigade will know what zone the fire is in, nice and clear. Fire panels go in there. At the moment, base is installed. Yeah. Pub is going right on top of it. Bish bash boom, that's it, jobs are good. In. Smash that out, fuse spur, most likely going to go on the left side because that's where the mains is. on the call point to that cluster unit expander whatever you want to call it what you firstly have to do what some people don't read the manual properly and they think oh why aren't it powering on there's a jumper here all you need to do flick it power on and when you're ready to add it onto that expander over there press the log on button as you're adding a new device all right so once we've powered everything up what you do is get the address card out this is going to be address one as if it's the first call point on the main entrance slide it in so once that address card is in, what you do is you go up to the expander, cluster unit, press the main button, add new device. Then what you do on the actual call point itself, you hold it down for three seconds. And that is the address device ident number. Press do you want to add, press yes. And that's adding now. You have to do a learn on the sounder and a heat detector or smoke detector, whatever you have. Firstly, you've got to power it on which is four, click the deal switch down, four is for power. And then this one's gonna be address seven. So one, two, on and three on this particular address system. So what you do is hold down for three seconds to log on, the LED light light up, then go to the expander, press the home button, add new device. And there you go, it's found it. Do you wanna add it on? Yeah, that's the ident number adding on and this will be going into a slot so that's slot five so what we do now just to show you is we go on to device status here we go so we're in device status and we can see address seven and eight comp so address eight is the smoke detector we've got on here and the sounder is seven so it automatically adds on the second one on i'm going to quickly explain the addressing that we use on these because it uses binary. So on these detectors, you have your programming and they're actually numbered up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And as you see, you've got an on state and an off state. This uses binary. So binary works in the method of number one is one, number two is two, but number three is actually four. So it goes one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 60, so if you're trying to get to number three, you have to put on number one and number two, that gives you three. If you want number four, you actually only turn on number three. If you want number five, you turn on three and one. It's far more easier if you actually look at the Apollo guide that comes with the uh, equipment, it will tell you there, address one, switch number one is on. Two, switch number two is on. Three, switch one and two is on. Four, switch number three is on. Five, switch three and one is on. A little bit confusing at first, but once you get binary in your head, it'll be quite easy going forward. This thing is 
programmed on, all the devices are programmed on. What you do is you auto learn the panel. You'll see all your devices that you have learned on to that expander. So then obviously you connect up your PC to the panel. Right, so this is the MX Pro series configuration software. Once you take a download from the panel to here, you'll see the list of all your devices. And that's where you can start texting your devices, zoning them up properly. And any inputs, delays, this is where you can program them. sound test make sure that all the sound levels are up to British standards BS5839-1 <laughs> This is your fire alarm system and how to do a weekly test on how to use your control panel. So in normal conditions, your panel should look like this. It should have the WFP logo, telephone number, and it says normal panel operation. The only light it should have on is the power light. None of the others should be on there. So a quick brief on the panel is that you've got these push buttons that are the ones that you'll be interested in. So you have a reset, a mute, a silence resound and evacuate. So the pretty much what they say is that that will evacuate the building, that will silence the alarms or resound them if the alarm has been silenced already. That will mute any faults conditions, that would be like a local internal buzzer, and then that will reset any fire conditions or fault conditions. So we're going to do a fire alarm test as you would do on a weekly event, and this is the call point we're going to test. First we'll lift the cover, press the white in the middle, the red light will come on. You're going to reset the call point by putting the key in the bottom. Push the key up and then pull the jaw down and then push the jaw all the way back up. Okay, the light will stay on. Come to the panel, you'll see there's a fire condition on the panel. It tells you it's the main entrance and it's a call point. So you're going to silence the alarm. Okay, you notice that the silence, sound of silence came on and then the sound has stopped. And there's, they're a little bit slow to stop, but that's because they're communicating. That's not a problem, that's normal. You're then going to press the reset button. And after a few seconds, that will reset back to normal.